Hello everyone. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how Intelligent's suite of tools can enable the workflow associated with a manufacturing facility's production planning, scheduling, tracking, and reporting needs. This video is not designed to provide a comprehensive tutorial on how to create models in ScheduluePro. For detailed information on building models in ScheduluePro, please refer to the ScheduluePro manual as well as the other videos under the training page of our website. Please note that a free functional evaluation version of ScheduluePro is also available under the downloads page of our website. The evaluation version includes copies of various examples that you may test drive. You may also download the README files which explain these examples from the link shown here. The architecture associated with ScheduluePro's planning, scheduling, tracking, and reporting workflow is shown here. The production recipes associated with each product are first built within the ScheduluePro application. Product campaigns are then planned and published by the plant scheduler who maintains the production schedule. Actual operation timing information and material transactions associated with the scheduled campaigns may then be recorded within the tracker application by plant operators or supervisors. Meanwhile, plant managers, engineers, and others who are interested in viewing the status of the production schedule may use the web viewer to see the current production plan as well as the scheduling changes that have occurred. Tying all these activities together is the application SQL Server, which allows updated information to be exchanged between these three tools. Note that this workflow is only available in the full version of ScheduluePro. It is not supported by the demo and light versions of ScheduluePro. The production planning, scheduling, tracking, and reporting workflow will now be demonstrated. After creating a project within ScheduluePro, one or more campaigns can be defined within the campaign sequence table. For instance, let's assume that at the beginning of the week, the planning team, including the master planner and schedulers, define a two-week production plan. In this example, the production plan is simply a four-batch campaign of the product A recipe. The Gantt chart for this particular recipe is shown here. In this chart, the overall batch duration is shown by the yellow bar, while the dark blue bars represent procedures and the light blue bars represent individual operations within each procedure. The durations and the start and end times are also shown in the table here. The Gantt chart provides a useful method for verifying the scheduling information associated with an individual recipe. After a production plan is defined, it can be scheduled using the Schedule All Campaigns button. The equipment occupancy chart associated with the production plan can then be viewed and assessed by the planning team. On this chart, you can see the four batches of the Product A campaign displayed in different colors. The identities of the key equipment units are displayed on the Y-axis. You can also see the current timeline associated with this computer's clock setting. Although ScheduluePro can handle much more complex scenarios, including many campaigns of a variety of products, this example has been kept very simple for the sake of clarity. At this point, the schedule can be saved to the database by clicking on the Save Trace button here. Exporting a schedule to the database establishes a baseline for the activities that need to be performed. In addition, once a schedule has been exported, various charts and reports associated with the saved campaigns can be viewed through the Web Viewer interface. For instance, the Web Viewer's Gantt chart page provides a visual representation of the schedule that can be easily accessed and understood by plant management 
engineers, and operators. Here, you can see the expected start and end times of each batch in the product A1 campaign, as well as the duration and timing of individual procedures and their operations. This is similar to the Gantt chart that was available directly within the Schedule Pro application, but this interface can be easily accessed and understood by personnel who do not have Schedule Pro installed and who are not trained on Schedule Pro. The Equipment Occupancy Chart page of the Web Viewer provides another helpful visual representation of the schedule. Here, you can see the utilization of each equipment unit over the entire course of the schedule. Furthermore, you may also choose to display the schedules for individual staff members. In addition, you may choose to display outages such as maintenance activities, nighttime downtime, weekend downtime, holidays, etc. Now let's assume that a certain operation in the plant takes longer than expected. The initially planned schedule may be modified by the planning team directly in Schedule Pro. For instance, let's say the completion of the ferment operation was delayed, and this operation took three days rather than two days. This creates a conflict with the originally planned schedule. The conflict is indicated by the exclamation point on this row and the fact that the procedure is now outlined in red. There are a variety of ways to resolve this conflict, although the easiest method is to simply select the Conflict Resolution button and choose Resolve All Conflicts. This removes the conflict by delaying the originally scheduled start time for the second batch. The Snapshot button can then be clicked again to store this updated schedule in the database. After the new schedule has been saved to the database, the modifications to the schedule can be viewed through the Web Viewer. By clicking on the Show Planned button, you can quickly determine which changes have occurred compared to the initially specified scheduling information. In this view, the original schedule is shown in faded colors, whereas the updated schedule is shown in full color on top of the original schedule. Here, it is clear that the duration of the ferment operation has been extended and that subsequent operations in this batch have been delayed. Note that by clicking on an activity, you can see its planned and actual start and end times. Here, you can see that the end time for this fermentation procedure is one day later than the initially planned end time. An alternative way to update the schedule is to use the Tracker application rather than Schedule Pro. To demonstrate this, I will first revert the change that I made to the initial schedule. This returns the production plan to its original state. Switching to the Tracker application, we can see the procedures and operations associated with the first batch of this campaign. This simple interface allows operators to easily update scheduling information without needing to be familiar with the main Schedule Pro application. Here, you can see the anticipated start and end times for the operations associated with the fermentation procedure. Notice that the operations and procedures which are due to be updated based on their position relative to the current timeline are marked with exclamation points. As was done previously, we will assume that the operations prior to the ferment operation were completed as planned, but that the ferment operation takes one day longer than expected. To record this change, the end time field can be selected and the arrow button can be clicked to change the setting. Note that material transactions may also be recorded through the tracker. For instance, values associated with input and output streams, such as the media charge amount shown here, can be recorded on this tab. Furthermore, 
material transactions associated with storage units can be recorded on the Receipts tab. Clicking the Register Pending Updates button sends the updated scheduling information back to the database. The completed operations are then identified with green check marks on the tracker screen. These types of updates would be performed by operators and or supervisors on a regular basis throughout the day. Note that the updates that are exported from the tracker do not actually overwrite the original schedule. That information continues to be stored in the database. Instead, the updates are simply appended to a database table. These updates may subsequently be viewed and approved by the planning team. Once the updates from the tracker application have been registered, they can be viewed from the web viewer. Here, you can toggle between the original duration of an operation and its updated duration. The Show Tracked button allows plant personnel and managers to quickly understand what is happening in the plant relative to what was originally scheduled and to make adjustments if necessary. Keep in mind the operation timing changes that are made within the tracker application are not automatically propagated to the official schedule since they must still be reviewed and approved. This review process is done through the Schedule Pro interface. Here, the updates from the tracker may be reviewed by the planning group. Clicking OK on this screen applies the updates from the tracker and produces an updated schedule within Schedule Pro. These types of scheduling reviews and approvals may be performed periodically as the production schedule evolves over time. Depending on how the timing of various operations has changed relative to the previously established schedule, the updated schedule may contain new conflicts which must be resolved by the planning group. The updated production plan may then be saved to the database so that the tracker and web viewer have the latest planning information available to them. This cycle of generating a schedule in Schedule Pro, resolving conflicts, exporting the data to the database, updating the production activities using the tracker, viewing the scheduling information through the web viewer, and reviewing and approving the new changes to the schedule may be repeated as often as desired, although in practice the scheduling updates are typically reviewed and approved by the planning team once per day or once per shift. Note that a variety of charts and reports can be viewed from the main Schedule Pro application based on the data stored in the SQL Server database. For instance, the time utilization of each equipment unit can be displayed by selecting the SQL Server button, choosing a relevant campaign, and clicking the Equipment Utilization Chart button. Here, you can see that the production fermenter is the most heavily utilized equipment unit. Additional charts and reports can be viewed using these other buttons. Similar charts and reports can be viewed from the web viewer. For instance, the same equipment utilization graph, which I just showed in Schedule Pro, may be created from this tab. Additional outputs from this tab include a tardiness graph, which displays the scheduled duration and delay associated with each campaign, and several reports, which display scheduling information associated with each batch. For instance, the schedule report allows managers and other plant personnel to easily see the planned start and end times of the activities associated with each batch, as well as delays and completion percentages associated with each activity. If more or less granularity is required in the schedule report or the activities report, the detail level for them can be set lower or higher on the main campaign reports page. Finally, 
inventory profiles may be visualized for any storage units that are associated with the production schedule. The inventory profile for the product generated by this campaign is shown here. On this chart, the green line displays the total amount in the product A storage unit versus time. Note that if you hover the mouse over a button that marks the end of a line segment, you can see the information associated with that point. As you can see, initially there is approximately 80 kilograms of product A in storage. Each completed batch of this campaign adds an additional 20 kilograms to this storage unit. The rate of supply or discharge may also be viewed. These rates are associated with the axis on the right-hand side. Furthermore, the negative of the discharge rate can be added to the supply rate in order to arrive at a net rate flowing in or out of inventory. The inventory charts provide a clear way to understand the anticipated inventory levels for any raw materials, intermediates, or products which have storage units associated with them. In summary, the integrated use of SchedulePro, the tracker, and the web viewer provides plant personnel with visibility into the current schedule, allows key scheduling information to be recorded, facilitates understanding of changes to the schedule over time, and enables resources to be assigned appropriately as the schedule evolves. This concludes the overview of SchedulePro's suite of tools for managing a manufacturing facility's production planning, scheduling, tracking, analysis, and reporting needs. For additional details on how to create models in SchedulePro, please refer to the SchedulePro manual, the online training videos, and the SchedulePro example readme files. In addition, please visit www.intelligen.com to download the free evaluation version of SchedulePro in order to test drive the SchedulePro examples. Thank you.